if tomorrow is our great getting up morning, uh, if tomorrow we have to meet the judgment day, uh, Heavenly Father, we want you to let our folks know uh, that we died facing the enemy. We want them to know that we went down standing up amongst those that are fighting against our oppression. We want them to know, Heavenly Father, that we died for freedom. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace and blessings, greetings and salutations. This is yours truly, Dan Adams, a.k.a. the Soulful Conservative, the DA and the Prosecutor, coming to you live once again from the Political Heat Remote Studios, a.k.a. the Blueberry. Let's get right into it. In an emotional meeting after an embarrassing gun bill vote, Democrats learned their 2018 blue wave isn't so blue. Their promise to their constituents was that they were going to put people over politics. Just a couple of months into the new reign in the House after the blue wave election, that's in quotes, blue wave election in 2018, Democrat leaders are coming to find that they're not quite as unified as they'd hoped they would be. And that some of the moderate Democrats elected in districts Trump won in 2016 are actually willing, actually willing to do what the increasingly radical leadership of the party is committed to never doing, ladies and gentlemen, and that is compromising at times with Republicans. This past Wednesday, despite being the minority part in the House, Republicans managed to win a vote that helped empower ICE, the agency that Sandy Ocasio-Cortez and other radical Democrats have demonized as the embodiment of xenophobia and cruelty (laughs) and want to abolish it outright, ladies and gentlemen, not take funds away from it, not restructure it, abolish it outright, and promote the Republican agenda of deporting more people living in the country illegally. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that the majority-led Democrats in the House are having infighting just cracks me the hell up. It is something that this has me popping out at the seams because this so-called quote blue wave was supposed to sweep the nation sweep the nation they can't even sweep their own party they can't even come together as a party they can't even and i mean even now granted when it comes to ride or die the democrats will always have each other's backs We all know this. We have seen it on display. But if there's infighting in regards to congressional matters like this, to legislative matters like this going forward, the error is going to be, I guess, maybe a red wave coming in 2020. Who knows? Stay tuned. Keep it locked. And always come back to this particular show, the Dan Adams Show. For the truth. On to the next topic. New York City implemented minimum wage hike for fast food workers. Now, these individuals are looking for jobs. That's right. The greatest plunge in restaurant jobs in roughly 20 years. Let me repeat that. The greatest plunge in restaurant jobs in roughly 20 years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we all know as a basic economist okay i'm not an economy professor i'm not an economy teacher i am not a expert in economics but what we've seen in seattle especially in seattle 
Washington. And that minimum, minimum wage hike that went across the board, not just in fast food, but across the board. We've seen the negative effects of raising the minimum wage to a wage that is unseemly, unobtainable. The left knows this, but it's always something that they're trying to push in regards to something that is going to bring them more voters. Well, in this case, ladies and gentlemen, it's taking away, eliminating jobs. So for all that effort and for all the shouting from the megaphone in regards to we got to well, this minimum wage has to be hiked way high, ladies and gentlemen, high above the sky. But yet when they do it, these negative effects occur. Just stop listening to Democrats, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying the Republicans have all the answers because they're on my S list as well. Along many fronts. But at least in situations like this, common sense reigns. And we all know that they just can't hike the minimum wage without the economy, ladies and gentlemen, being at a certain point. Without so many individuals having jobs. Without realizing that small business owners are going to take the hit in regards to this minimum wage hike. And even with a minimum wage hike in a city like New York City and seeing negative effects thereof should be a red herring. The freaking strobe lights should be freaking blaring in regards to we need to take a step back. We need to realize we cannot implement this until we know that the economy is where it should be. But the Democrats never listen to common sense. They don't listen to the experts. They don't listen to or adhere to past devastating effects from hiking the minimum wage. Now, Sandy Ocasio-Cortez, Sandy O. <laughs> Sandy Ocasio-Cortez makes no excuse for her own huge carbon footprint. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The woman who wants to implement this Green New Deal and take away 90% of your income <laughs> to pay for this Green New Deal. As the New York Post took Rep. Sandy Ocasio-Cortez of New York to task for repeated hypocrisy of leaving her own significant carbon footprint, the Green New Deal peddling socialist responded via Twitter on Saturday night she has no shame in living in the world. No shame. So she said this, quote, I also fly and use AC, she tweeted, in response to the Post report of her campaign spending almost four times as much on gas-guzzling car rides despite, ladies and gentlemen, a convenient subway station near her New York campaign office. Quote, living in the world as it is isn't an argument against working towards a better future. Ladies and gentlemen, no one is saying that we shouldn't go down the route of renewable energy. No one said, I'm not even saying that, and I'm a conservative. But these individuals are so radical. These individuals are so far to the left that they want to eliminate fossil fuels. They want to eliminate natural gas, they want to eliminate coal. These people are complete and utter blithering idiots that they, that they can eliminate. Eliminate the number one factors in how you get to work, how you warm your house and keep your family warm <laughs> during 20 degree and below weather like we're having here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. These people are complete and blithering idiots that they, that they could just overnight and with this us being gone in 12 years, if nothing happens. That's right. Keep putting that into your pipe and smoking it. Even with actions taking place by this Green New Deal, we're supposed to be gone in 12 years. That's how lunatic sounding this Green New Deal is, ladies and gentlemen. 
You can't overnight change how the world has been operating for decades. You can't do it. And for Sandy Ocasio-Cortez and these leftists who think that it can, we all know what it's all about. It's about control. Absolute, utter control and nothing else. They may somehow believe maybe a smidgen of what crap they're peddling, but ultimately it is about control. And for her, for her to come out and espouse the fact that she's the boss now, that's right, she's the boss. You've all heard her comments on regards to, for those who are opposing her Green New Deal and not coming up with something better than her Green New Deal, then she is going to take the mantle of being the boss. Hashtag child police. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I move on to this next topic, take a minute, take a breath, get a, get a coffee, get a, get a bagel, get a muffin, get whatever you need in order to grace, excuse me, not grace, <laughs> grasp what I'm about to speak on. Rep Rashida Tlaib, Democrat from Michigan, you know, the one who said we need to impeach the mother effer in regards to Trump, is facing accusations that she potentially violated federal election commission rules after campaign finance documents revealed she paid herself a hefty salary using campaign funds. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, campaign funds after. And that is the word that needs to be on blast after her general election last November. So what are the details, ladies and gentlemen? Campaign finance documents show Tlaib began paying herself from her campaign committee, Rashid Tlaib for Congress, last May after winning her primary election. From May 7th until November 6th, that's right, the day of the general election. Tlaib paid herself $4,000 per month outside of two checks for $3,000 each in August. In total, she paid herself 28000 during the election. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big-ass but. But documents show, ladies and gentlemen, Talib paid herself twice, not once, twice, after. In caps, A-F-T-E-R, after the general election. The first payment of 2000 came on November 16th. That's right, after November 6th which was cons excuse me, consistent with payments in preceding months. A second payment coming on December, December 1st, almost a full month after the general election, for $15,000, a payment more than three times larger than the next largest payment. The payments do not detail what the large payment was for. The description only states, in quote, salary. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to keep an eye on this. We can't let our our foot off the gas on this particular topic at hand. Because, once again, we're going to have another leftist get away with breaking the rules, breaking the law, that any one of us, any one of us, <clears throat> excuse me, may have participated in then we would be facing charges, facing jail time. And who the hell else might be coming down the pipe? So, <coughs> excuse me, over the weekend, we had a, another Sandy Ocasio-Cortez. I say in that name, Sandy Ocasio-Cortez. Another Twitter spat. And this one comes from, and it started with, for Mr. Payne, who brought the pain for Fox News business, asking, just asking, Sandy, so what percentage of staff do you have that are black, Miss Ocasio-Cortez? So Ocasio-Cortez responded and said this, we have black staff. We don't parade them around to show the world how diverse our team is. And use that as some kind of evidence of the absence of racism. That's what tokenism is. So, 
the witty young lady conservative Ali Beth Stuckey responded to one Ocasio Cortez and she said this so if someone doesn't have any slash enough black people on their staff that's racist but if someone does have black people on their staff and say that they do that's also racist thank you for making this perfectly clear couldn't have said it any better <coughs> excuse me couldn't have stated that any better couldn't have come back and clap back at Ocasio Cortez any better this is what the left does ladies and gentlemen paint us conservatives as racist at every single turn they fail miserably because their own racist tendencies their own racist background their own racist origins can be put on blast can be shoved right back in their faces when they try to pull this crap and those of us on the right need to continue to do that have your stats your facts and everything at your disposal at the ready when anyone on the left tries to call you a racist, a bigot, a xenophobe, a homophobe, and anything else that's an ist or an ism. We need to, we, forget the being Mr. Nice or being the nice guy on, on these matters. It's time to take these people to task. It's time to put them on blast, as I say. And speaking of putting people on blast, I'm not even certain why President Trump even had to come out and do this or say this or possibly put this into effect. Trump's executive order to bring free speech on college campuses is bold and is a necessary move. So, ladies and gentlemen, President Donald J. Trump over the weekend basically stated that if free speech isn't implemented across the board throughout academia, college campuses, that federal money for, for research for these college and universities will be withheld unless free speech on these universities and college campuses is upheld. We know the latest story in UC Berkeley where a Turning Points USA activist was just trying to converse with individuals on campus and some yahoo who has now been arrested, thank God, sucker punched this guy for no apparent reason just because he was a conservative. Just because he was exercising his, his First Amendment right of free speech. He wasn't harassing anyone. He wasn't trying to make a scene. All he was doing was trying to converse with the leftist leaning majority led UC Berkeley. It seems that the left can't seem to, I guess, allow free speech to reign unless it's their example or their thinking of what free speech is now ladies and gentlemen i don't care what side of the aisle you may walk on i don't care what political background what your political ideology is i'm of the mindset that i will allow you to speak your mind no matter what and if it ends up being to where consequences or brought forth your way, that's on you because you opened your mouth and said what you said. Now, people are saying that even hate speech is protected by the First Amendment. And I've seen examples of such to where I've gotten upset, but realized that somehow, some way, what I'm saying to you right now as a conservative can be viewed as hate speech is viewed by the left as hate speech. But am I going to continue to allow anyone to stop me from saying what I need to say? Hell to the no. No one is going to silence me. No one is going to 
brush me off, brush me off their shoulder and silence me. It's not going to happen. I'm going to do what I have to do, even if I have to somehow capitulate to a certain degree, change my route of how I do things and how I go about things. But you are not going to silence one Daniel Clifford Adams, born and raised in Syracuse, New York, now a resident of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You are not going to put me on the sidelines and and bench me. You are not going to, I guess, in a lack of words, shut me the F up just because you disagree with what I have to say. Because as a conservative, I would never do that to anyone on the left as much as I oppose their ideology. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you go about your day, uh, and this is going to be the, I guess, if you want to call it, preachy segment before I end this broadcast. But as you go about your day, and if you're a Christian, take a minute, wherever you need to do it, if you need to do it in, in, a, in a quiet place, please do so. But I'm going to at some point get down on my knees and just pray for my family, pray for you and yours and your families. I am going to pray for America because that is what I do. <laughs> and I'm also going to pray for the world as a whole, that somehow, some way we come together, even though we may have opposing ideologies, ideologies, excuse me, politically, but somehow, some way come together as children of God, ladies and gentlemen, as disciples of Jesus Christ and somehow some way put the pettiness aside and somehow come together and somehow do the best that we can do the best that we can. I'm not saying that we are always going to be kumbaya all the time. That is never going to happen. But what I'm saying is let's make the effort, at least make the effort. Stand up for what you believe in. That's, I'm not saying to somehow kowtow to those that oppose you and those that may have an opposing opinion of yours or those who may clap back and combat you for what you believe in. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. If we could somehow, in a general way, look at your fellow man and realize if they need help, if they need assistance, do not turn away from them, no matter who they are. Now, as I end this broadcast, let me get the particulars out of the way once again. You can reach me on social media at Dan Adams Show, all one word, at Dan Adams Show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Gab. You can also hit me up on my website. Check out what's going on there. I still need writers for my blog. The Political Heat, that's all one word, thepoliticalheat.com. And also hit me up at my email, danadam73 at gmail.com. And if you want to support my efforts, go to paypal.me forward slash danadam73. Repeat, that's paypal.me forward slash danadam73 if you want to support my efforts. May God just continue to bless you and yours. May he keep you and your family safe. Until next time, God bless you and yours. Peace and blessings. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. If I said it, I'm lifting, wipe my tongue for no 